everyone. Thank you so much for joining Sustain Life Journal Yoga today. We'll go ahead and get started in Velasana Pose with our feet together and our knees out wide, sinking our hips gently onto our heels and extending our hands out in front of us, resting gently on the mat. Allowing our forehead to come to the mat, or you can bend your elbows and rest your forehead on your hands. In today's flow, I'll be using a mixture of English and Sanskrit to describe the poses. Please make sure you're tuning in to how your body feels in each pose and listening to that, listening to your intuition. I'm just here as a guide to help you move through this physical practice. Slowly begin to walk your hands to the right side of your mat. They may even come off of your mat. And allow your forehead again to come gently down onto the ground feeling the stretch in our side body and keeping our hips still planted onto our heels. Take a deep inhale through your nose and on your exhale, begin to bring your hands over to the left side of your mat, really tuning into your breath, taking deep inhales and exhales. Slowly begin to walk your hands back to the center and then walk your hands back towards your body, rolling over your ankles and making your way into a seated position as we move in to Pashimoto Tanasana. You can bring a generous bend to your knees and then slowly begin to allow your upper body to come over your legs. Your hands can come to your thighs, your shins, even your feet. If you feel a sharp pain in your lower back, that means you've gone a little bit too far, so try to ease out of it a bit. On your next exhale, begin to release out of this pose and we'll draw our left foot into the inner part of our right thigh, extending our right leg out in front of us. Twist your torso towards your right leg and then when you're ready, you can begin to fold over your right leg, coming to a place that feels comfortable for you in our Jadu Sirasasana pose. On your next exhale, begin to rise out of this pose and we'll move over onto the opposite side. Lift your hands up over your head and melt over your left leg. Again, tuning into your inhales and exhales, 
Just focusing on each pose as it comes, each moment as it comes. Begin to bring your left leg in towards your body and then roll over your ankles, moving in to a tabletop position, stocking your hips over your knees and your shoulders over your ankles. Draw your belly button and your chin in towards your chest. And on your exhale, allow your belly and chin to move up towards the sky. This cat and cow, I was going a little quick, but just be sure to go at your own pace, maybe slower or quicker, but we'll just alternate between caving our back up and then dropping our belly down towards the mat, really pressing into your hands and even taking organic movements when it feels right for you. Begin to make your way to a tabletop position, stacking your hips over your knees, shoulders over wrists, and we'll begin to extend our right leg behind us, and we'll bring our left hand to our ear, kind of in a chicken wing, lifting our right foot up, and then drawing your knee and your elbow together extending your right leg behind you, lifting your left arm, and then drawing them in again to meet. Extending and bringing them together. Really tune into your core, extending. Allow your left hand and right knee to come down onto the mat and we'll move over onto the other side. Extending our left leg and bringing our right hand to our right ear. Extending them and then drawing your knee to your elbow. If you'd rather have your arm out straight, that's totally fine. This is just a little bit of a different variation. Extending and slowly allowing your hands and knees to come down onto the mat into our tabletop position, tucking our toes and making our way into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Bending one knee and the other, just settling into this pose, pressing deeply into your hands and drawing your chest towards your knees. Your heels do not need to come onto the mat, and you're more than welcome to have a generous bend in your knees. Take a deep inhale through your nose, and on your exhale, lift your right leg up behind you. Draw your knee towards your chest, and then allow your right foot to come in between your hands. We'll spiral our back foot down onto the mat, lifting up into Virabhadrasana 2. Our front knee should be over our ankle and we're reaching out through our fingertips, reaching in opposite directions and keeping the integrity of our right knee. 
On your next exhale, allow your left hand to come to your thigh and reach back with your right hand. Moving into our Viparita Viravadrasana. On your next exhale, shift your upper body forward, moving into Utita Parjva Konasana. Really reaching through your left hand and trusting the strength of your core. Your next exhale will move through our Viparita Viravadrasana and our Utita Parjva Konasana. So we're moving forwards and backwards with our upper body and our arms, but we're keeping our lower body in the same position. This takes a lot of strength in our legs and in our core to keep us stable, but you can do it. The next time you come forward, you can bring your hands to the outside of your right foot, coming into our plank pose, really pushing on our hands, and then allowing our knees to come down onto the mat, drawing our elbows in towards our body, and allowing our upper body to come onto the mat. We'll slowly lift our chest away from the mat, gently pressing into our hands and keeping our focus on our inhales and exhales. If you'd like to press up a little higher, you're more than welcome to. And rest whenever your body says it's time to rest. We'll begin to press up into our tabletop position and then making our way into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Take a deep inhale through your nose, preparing your body for the opposite side and exhale. Lift your left leg up behind you, keeping your hips square towards the mat and then draw your knee in towards your chest and place it in between your hands. Spiral your right foot down onto the mat and lift your torso up into our Vira Vajrasana too. Allow your left knee to come over your left ankle and trust that your legs are keeping you steady in this pose. Allow your right hand to come down onto your right thigh and reach back up or down, maybe stretching out your neck. On your next exhale, shifting forward into our Utita Parjva Konasana. Again, reaching towards the front of your mat and choosing whatever arm variations feels best in your body. And when you're ready, you can begin to flow at your own pace, moving forwards and backwards, maybe staying in one pose a little bit longer, following the flow of your breath and tuning in to what you need in your practice today. exhale you can begin to spiral your hands down onto the mat and this time we'll drop our knees onto the mat 
Shifting our hips back into our Balasana pose, exactly where we started, allowing our hips to come onto our heels and stretching our hands out in front of us. Taking a moment to rest, to thank ourselves for our standing practice and for showing up on the mat today. Gently begin to walk your hands towards your body, allowing our hips to come down onto the mat in a seated position and slowly coming down onto your back as we move into Supta Baddha Konasana pose, bringing our feet together and our knees out wide and our arms in a goal post position. So our elbows and the backs of our hands laying on the mat. And then just begin to release Allow your hands to come to the outsides of your knees, drawing your knees together, and we'll move into a supine twist, allowing your knees to come over on your left side, and now extending your arms straight, bringing the backs of your hands to the mat, and again, tapping into your breath. Using the strength of your core, begin to bring your knees up, moving through the center, and then resting over onto your right side. And if you'd like a neck stretch, you can look over to your left side and then maybe switching the direction. To draw your knees up towards the sky and if you'd like to take any more poses to complete your practice today you're more than welcome to do so and when you're ready we'll make our way into our shavasana pose just laying on our back extending our hands and our feet to the corners of our mat allowing our feet to fall open in our Shavasana pose, we're surrendering completely to this present moment and thanking ourselves for the time that we carved out today, for ourselves, for our well being. As we rest in our Shavasana pose, we will move into a meditation that'll be about five minutes long. During our meditation, we will just keep our attention on our inhales and our exhales. And I'll let you know when the meditation is complete.
begin to deepen your inhales and exhales. Maybe making small movements in your fingers and toes. Just reawakening your body to your day. Bringing your mind back into your day. Hopefully with a little bit more peace and clarity. If you are laying down, you can begin to roll over onto one side into a fetal position. And when you're ready, and only when you're ready, make your way up into a seated position. Thank you so, so much for joining Sustain Life Journal Yoga today. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you would like more yoga videos in the future to add to your morning routine. And if you would like to learn more about sustainable living and yoga lifestyle tips, you can visit sustainlifejournal.com and join the newsletter. I hope you have a really great day and I hope to see you next time.